Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Mohammad Ali Imran. I am Dean for Graduate Studies for College of Science and Engineering at University of Glasgow. And I'm here to discuss with you and present to you the vision of future mobile telephony, uh, which is the so-called sixth generation of mobile telephony, and how this future digital connectivity can transform different areas of our everyday life. So this will be the focus of my talk. Uh, let's uh, now go through some of these uh, interesting areas. Uh, so I start with a brief introduction of uh, communication sensing and imaging hub that I lead as a director. And uh, in this hub, we have a very wide coverage of different layers of protocol stack for wireless communication, ranging from physical layer up to the application layer. We work on blockchain wireless networks for privacy preservation. Blockchain is very challenging for wireless connectivity because of unreliable connection links as well as uh, energy efficiency requirements. It's very energy uh, intensive task and many of the wireless devices are battery operated. Intelligent reflective surfaces where we try to extend the challenge of wireless communication optimization beyond the transmitter and receiver to now include controlling the wireless channel as well. Antenna design, and as I will show you, design of antenna using AI-driven techniques, new materials. This is something unique that we do. Signal processing, ranging from uh, physical layer techniques like uh, demodulation, coding, channel uh, decoding, as well as non-orthogonal multiple access and uh, interface cancellation, interface alignment, and so on. We work on free space optics and point-to-point -point wireless backhauling techniques as well. Uh, we use wireless for healthcare, not only for connecting the healthcare systems, but also from the point of view of sensing using RF waves as well as radars in order to monitor human vitals. AI-driven design, not just for hardware, but for wireless communication systems as well. Uh, converged and self-organized networking where we can take human out of the loop by optimizing the uh, com communication uh, parameters for a wireless network. We also look, look at the resilience of the network by making sure there is enough redundancy, self-organized capability, self-healing capability in the network, and finally work on sensors and devices beyond RF. For example, we have developed a non-invasive glucose monitoring technique in sensing uh, application of communication sensing and imaging hub. So the hub has uh, trialed a lot of uh, translational research uh, by working closely with industry. We have uh, converted a lot of uh, contributions to knowledge into actual practical working systems. And this I will demonstrate to you in a, in a short while on a slide. But before that, let me introduce the facility that we use in order to enable this kind of translation of research. This is a campus-wide uh, private 5G network that we have deployed with the help and financial support of Scottish government as a national center for urban test bed. And this uh, consists of several uh, outdoor and indoor basis stations, three large outdoor cells, and around 14 indoor cells to cover a wide area of the campus. Campus is a good example of a smart city. So uh, we uh, try to uh, identify different use cases which will help in a smart monitoring of health of population on the campus, uh, monitoring and efficient use of built environments, and managing different metropolitan events. So you can see on this one, the use cases I was mentioning on the left-hand column, you have the description of the use case. In the center, I demonstrate how we work closely with different industrial partners in order to trial as well as optimize this use case. And on the right-hand column, you see the fundamental technologies which we have contributed to in terms of publications as well as fundamental research and contribution to knowledge in order to enable these use cases. So for example, uh, let's take the example of contactless activity monitoring, which requires uh, uh, mounting the sensing devices on mobile platforms. So it now re needs mobility management techniques, uh, but at the same time, it requires ultra reliable low latency communication because the amount of data, sensing data, imaging data that is being shared is of high throughput and bandwidth as well as this requires uh, computer, uh, mobile edge computing so uh, and enhanced mobile broadband capabilities as well. So uh, same applies with live augmented or virtual reality system where ultra reliable low latency communication becomes important because as you move your head, the scene should change in no time, otherwise you will feel dizzy. 
connected healthcare devices requires massive amount of devices to be connected. So massive machine type communication and same applies to secure IoT platform where a huge amount of IoT devices per unit area need connectivity. Pop-up networking requires self-organized networking capability, both for optimization, uh, deployment or configuration, as well as healing of the network. Finally, wireless control, uh, which enables teleworking or remote working or remote surgery, for example, or remote uh, industrial participation of different uh, population. This requires ultra-reliable low latency communication, artificial intelligence machine learning in order to predict the future and continue seamless uh, control from a distant location. Finally, vehicle to X, where a lot of vehicles need to be connected uh, and they are high speed mobility platforms. So they need good mobility management as well as uh, ultra reliable low latency communication for agile uh, reaction to different events like breaking of a car uh, should uh, be informed to all other following cars. All of this will be enabled by native artificial intelligence in the network. So a key core element of the sixth generation of wireless communication is ubiquitous artificial intelligence. So use of artificial intelligence, not just on physical layer for prediction and other technologies, but use of artificial intelligence for uh, optimizing the network, configuring the network, healing the network, as well as uh, selection of different devices, selection of different connect connectivity technologies, multi-use of radio access technologies, and so on. This will enable ultra-fast broadband, ultra-low energy consumption, ultra-high mobility in the next generation network, ultra-high precision of different decisions, ultra-massive connectivity by increasing number of devices that can be connected, and improvement in coverage as well. So looking at the evolution of 6G, of course, uh, in terms of data throughput, in terms of lower latency, in terms of higher number of devices to be connected, 6G aims to be better than 5G. And this betterment is still following an exponential trend, and we are getting saturated with the resources. That's why new spectrum is needed, as, as I will show you. Terahertz has to be utilized as well, at least for short-range communication systems. Uh, so innovation needs an exponential uh, exponential contribution, exponential effort in order to identify uh, next generation communication systems. So main areas will be use of artificial intelligence, development of more energy efficient systems, uh, disaggregation and virtualization of different resources, uh, moving towards cellless networks using beamforming and other techniques, new disruptive technologies and new spectrum. So terahertz is one of the new spectrum that we want to exploit. And in order to make terahertz feasible, we have to come from two directions by adopting our optical communication techniques as well as our millimeter wave and high frequency communication techniques as well. However, terahertz presents many new challenges as identified in the paper that I'm citing here from my colleagues, Mervander Bayatol, which, which includes quasi-opticality of the band, uh, new wireless architectures in order to adopt terahertz as a frequency band, uh, synergy with lower frequency bands because we will still continue to use them. Uh, and one of the key advantage of terahertz is because it has uh, uh, high absorption losses as well as uh, low penetration. Uh, it is not only suitable for short range wireless communication, but also very suitable to sense different mechanisms, mediums, changes in the medium, and so on. New file layer procedures need to be developed, spectrum access techniques need to be modified, and real-time network optimization needs to be performed in order to use this. So joint communication and sensing is one of the key area in our hub. And uh, this is one of our Nature Light paper that has been uh, published uh, where we have used and showed that wireless on the walls can improve the sensing capability of RF signals. And how it's very, top level, it's easy to understand because if you have control on the wireless channel, you can manage uh, more precise beam forming. So you can focus on the area that you want to sense. For example, if you're reading someone's lips uh, in a room, uh, if you have control on the wireless environment as well, you can use not just the transmitter, uh, but also the reflect reflective intelligent surfaces on the walls in order to focus your RF energy on the subject. And then you can do micro 
sensing, for example, reading of uh, lips movement, uh, breathing rate, uh, heartbeat, uh, hand gestures, and so on. Macro movements can be read even uh, with without the help of reconfigurable intelligent surfaces. However, it should be noted that if you have only one subject in the room, it's easier. But if you have multi-subject, then you have to do multi-subject resolution. And again, reconfigurable intelligent surface actually helps us in achieving this. Another contribution we have made, and it is published in Nature Communications, is uh, based on use of RF waves uh, to do lip reading behind a face mask. Again, same principle is used. You focus RF energy. This is very useful for improving the quality of performance of uh, uh, different hearing aids because uh, hearing aids can get an auxiliary and augmented information from the lip reading, physical lip reading, in order to enhance the, co the, the audio signal of interest and suppress any cocktail or background noise. So <clears throat> coming back to this use of terahertz, uh, we have uh, used this terahertz in human healthcare, for example, by monitoring uh, at a skin depth level, the uh, terahertz penetration through the tissue. And this can help us in monitoring, uh, for example, uh, the hydration levels. And this hydration level is a key indicator of uh, different aspects of health, for example. And this can be done in a continuous manner uh, without affecting uh, other health parameters. Uh, and uh, th this, this can also be done, for example, uh, using artificial skin in the lab uh, to, to ensure human health and so on. So human healthcare using terahertz is one area. Similarly, plant healthcare using terahertz, uh, we have done it uh, both on macro and micro level, uh, where, for example, uh, at the plant cell level or leaf level or the overall plant level, as well as smaller and larger uh, field areas as well. And what you can identify is uh, molecular level changes in plant uh, uh, in plant cells, for example, uh, which can be an early indicator of an onset of a plant disease condition. 6G is also useful in security and fingerprinting. For example, a lot of uh, uh, security scanning applications uh, it can it can see beyond the other available frequency ranges that are in use, uh, and you can you can you can for example uh, look in the dark and so on. Uh, a lot of as as I showed you the example of uh, reading lips behind a face mask. This is similar here where terahertz can do uh, a better job in security monitoring. Autonomous vehicles, not just for short-range uh, wireless entertainment systems, but also for uh, LIDAR type of uh, ranging activities, as well as uh, communication from car to car, uh, uh, platooning, and different uh, other use cases, uh, terahertz will be useful. In order to configure and optimize terahertz usage, we have to look at the existing hardware systems and optimize them as well. So reconfigurable intelligent surfaces are a key. Uh, they are radio elements and they can improve the capabilities of the existing wireless systems. So we have developed uh, reflective intelligent surfaces, uh, prototypes and deployed in the labs as well as in uh, realistic uh, outdoor environments as well. So for example, indoor environments as well, sorry, uh, outdoor environments is still ongoing uh, development. So uh, these, our objectives are that it should be low cost and they should have high spatial resolutions. They should be easy to deploy. So the ones that we have developed are uh, expandable. They are tile-based design. So you can uh, you can you can connect different tiles in order to increase or decrease the area to be covered for reconfigurable intelligent surfaces. They have to be compatible with six G demands on communication and sensing. Uh, so once you have deployed it, it can control the way how RF waves are reflected or not reflected. It can control their reflection angle. It can control the amount of energy that is absorbed or reflected so that it can reshape the wireless environment as per the needs and requirements. So this is a physical example of uh, the testbed. As you can probably note here that these are tile-based designs and you can increase or decrease the size of this reconfigurable intelligent surface by connecting or removing certain number of tiles. This will have uh, high rate communication use cases. For example, uh, this will enable uh, uh, 
for example, this will enable high throughput video transmission and uh, agile reaction to video image to be to be transmitted uh, in AR and VR use cases. So antennas, antennas are uh, the key interface with which wireless sensing happens in the wireless network. So terahertz antennas require uh, innovative design techniques. AI-driven design techniques are one of them, but new materials are another way of designing uh, useful antennas. So we have used 2D material terahertz application. So graphene, uh, molybdenum, disulfide, uh, proboscite, as well as uh, hexagonal boron nitride. And as you can see, their frequency of operation as well as uh, uh, other different desirable properties like, for example, ultra thin uh, antenna or flexible antenna or small size antenna, they can all be attained by using appropriate materials in antenna design. Miniaturization in size, as you can see, smaller than the thumbnail antenna with very good performance is uh, based on uh, uh, graphene uh, based. Uh, graphene and gold provides even wider uh, uh, wider uh, S11 parameter, uh, desirable parameter over a range of frequency, as well as you can also uh, see that the physical size of this antenna is quite small. All of this is possible with the world-class measurement capabilities that we are lucky to enjoy at University of Glasgow site. Uh, very wide-ranging frequency uh, band capabilities, uh, vector network analyzers, uh, as well as uh, inkjet and 3D uh, printing techniques, uh, uh, waveform generation te technologies, device characterization technologies, and a quake chamber, uh, and our world-class uh, nanofabrication uh, capabilities. All of this enable us to do this end-to-end -end research where we uh, develop hardware, we characterize it in the lab, we uh, do experiments with it, and then uh, we fine-tune the technology and publish it. And using those uh, publications and contributions to knowledge, we then work closely with industrial partners in order to translate this research into practical systems which benefit humanity. So I won't go into the details in the interest of the time in the terahertz measurement setup, but if someone is interested, please get in touch and I can put you in touch with the uh, team uh, working on this one. Uh, I want to now uh, conclude by saying uh, a very, very sincere thank you. And if I'm not present in person and uh, this is being uh, video played, I sincerely apologize for not being able to make it because of some emergency uh, travel commitments. However, I uh, really thank uh, the organizers of this event to give me an opportunity to share our research uh, with, with all of you. You are very welcome to come and visit University of Glasgow as we are organizing our IEEE ICC in 2026, International Conference on Communication, as well as there are many other events which are being organized in the Scotland region. Uh, we welcome you to come and attend those events. So thank you all. And, uh, I uh, hope that this will be a useful session. I'm leaving a few minutes behind for answer any questions if there are. Thank you.